there's some hands. Good. I didn't know if we would get any hands on that one. Okay. Um, Genevieve always likes to ask me the weirdest questions. What is the She asks me all kinds of strange scenarios, no matter where we are. So, um, Genevieve, what's an example of something that you would ask me? Would you ever write the intimidator with no hands and without being local? Right? Yeah. To which my obvious no. answer is always no. no. Whatever she asks me, it's always some really dangerous, life-threatening no. scenario. And I always say no. But then she always says, what if God told you to? <laughs> what if God told you to? <laughs> to which I always say, well, then I guess I would if God told me to. And um, so then I have to kind of think to myself, would I really do that if God told me to do it? And I'd like to think that yes, I would. Um, thankfully, he has never told me to do that, <laughs> to test my faith. But sometimes when um, God asks us to do something, it is hard for us to obey him. Because a lot of the times, it's not convenient to us to obey him. And it's not easy for us to obey him. And sometimes it's just stuff we don't want to do. I have an example for you of myself. Um, when, like, five or six years ago, God gave me the opportunity to do children's sermons here at Flint Hill Baptist Church. And I was not doing the children's sermons at the time. Um, the preacher was doing them. But after the preacher left, um, somebody came up to me and said, would you consider doing the children's sermons at Flint Hill? And I said, oh. I said, well, I'll pray about it. Right? That's, yes. And I prayed about it, and I felt like I was supposed to do it. So I told the person, I will do this, but I want you to be looking for somebody else to do it full time. Like, I will do it just until you can find somebody else to do it. Because I really didn't want to do it. Not that I don't love y'all, because you know I do. But it was just something else I was going to have to do, and I was going to have to look up children's sermons, and I was going to have to try to memorize something to say, and then get up in front of the church every Sunday. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think they really look for anybody else <laughs> after I said I would do it until they could find somebody else. But yeah. guess what happened to me? It changed your whole life. Because I was obedient to God, even grudgingly, I wasn't happy about it. I was obedient. God started to bless me because of children's sermons. Yes, I love doing it now. And I used to have to sit here. I used to have to look up every week a children's sermon. But then, guess what happened? God started sending me a children's sermon every week. Something would happen in my week, and it would hit me over the head and go, this would be a great children's sermon. It would just hit me. And so God started sending me my very own children's sermons to do every week. And guess what happened? I started talking to the people I work with about my children's sermon. I would say to them, what do you think about this? I was thinking about doing a children's sermon about this, and I would kind of tell them my idea and how it related to God. And they started talking to me about it. And these are people who are not Christians. So God let me use that as an opportunity to talk to people that I work with about him every week in a nonchalant kind of way. Not like I was witnessing to them. I was doing it undercover. And um, I love doing my children's sermons now. But so, see, since I was obedient to God, he blessed me because of it. Now, how does God talk to children? Does he tell y'all stuff to do? Yes. No. 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 What do you think? Yes. Well, you obviously don't hear God say, Garrett, I want you 
to, and then tell you what to do, right? We don't hear God speaking to us that way. How do we hear him? Okay, I have an example. This is a woman's blog. A blog is a website that somebody writes that I read. Sit down, sit. And she wrote a letter to her son who was about to start third grade. No, not sure. But this, is, this explains it very well how God talks to you, children, and everybody. She says, if you see a child at your school being left out or hurt, let go of my skirt, or teased, a part of your heart is going to hurt. Your daddy and I want you to trust that heartache your whole life. You will notice it and trust it. That heartache is called compassion. And that is God's way of telling you to do something. That is him saying, wake up. Listen, one of my babies is hurting and I want you to do something to help. So whenever you feel compassion, that means God is speaking to you. Has that ever happened to you at school? Have you seen somebody that could use help? Sometimes we don't do anything. But that's your chance. That's God speaking to your heart. And we need to be obedient. And another way we can be obedient is to memorize scripture because that's how God tells us we can get it in our heart. And Eli has a scripture verse that he has memorized, and he wanted to share that with y'all today. Give one another in love. Revelation 5 Very good. Dear Holy Father, thank you for your day. Please help everyone um, be kind and compassionate to one another. Amen.